We thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to exalt your name together with my brothers and sisters from different places. I thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit enables us to be able to be relevant. It enables us, O oh God, to understand revelation that can be applied in lives. Thank you, Lord God, that everybody that joins here with an expectation to receive from you, may they all receive from you. I welcome you today. Looking forward to what God has to offer us as we yield to him willingly from our respective areas. We've chosen this time to gather and come before him as he tells us in his word to do. And so, obedient to his word, we trust him to do what he says he can do in his word. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to believe God means what he says. Let's not water down what God says he will do. Let's be very, very expectant. My desire was to play a song, but I won't be able to do it today. I'll do it some tomorrow. I had written a song that I dedicated for, to mothers. And uh, tomorrow I'll definitely do that. Tonight we're going to start the session with intercession. We will stand and pray for mothers. You might say, Pastor, I don't have someone that I look up to as a mother. That's why we need to pray. God can raise mothers that we read about in scripture. Someone today shared about good mothers and bad mothers and cited examples in scriptures of such. And so we can learn from some of these characters and learn from God himself what are the virtues we should see in mothers. And we can, instead of complaining, we can stand and for those women out there, we can say, God, teach me so I can demonstrate it in my community. Teach me so I can, in the mighty name of Jesus, be able to teach it to other young women that look up to me as an influence in my community. So let's just go before God. But before we do, I want to read a proverb that I enjoyed. It says, it's Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Then afterwards, I'll give us opportunities to welcome one another and to invite women that you think should be here or even men that you feel should be here. For those that have husbands with them, moms with them, it's okay to invite her. And when we pray, we stand and agree with the word of God first and agree with each other. There's power in agreement. But happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I'll read Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What a great responsibility God has given mothers to steward such treasures, not only in our generation, but in the generation that as mothers or as fathers or as a community we might not see. But I thank God for giving us such great responsibility. And when I say that some of the things that I teach, some of the virtues that we desire to see in mothers, we also desire to see in fathers. So I'm going to read a couple of quotes that I thought I'd share with you that were interesting, that were written by people that made an impact in the world. And as I read these quotes, some of you might think of scriptures that speak into that. I'll start with one. Billy Graham, an evangelist, stated, the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is not money or other material things accumulated in one's life, but rather a legacy of character and faith. So no one should disqualify themselves from the ability to pass on a legacy of character and faith. And today, as we look into scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, we will see how two good women passed on a great legacy to an individual called Timothy, who made an impact in his generation and is making an impact in our lives today. Another one which I, I think is worth 
a reading but by uh, a pastor he stated each day in our lives we have an opportunity to make deposits in the memory banks of our children so this is the day the Lord has made your children are great imitators they might not listen well but they imitate they watch closely as they say actions speak louder than words and I want to encourage mothers to remember that that our children are observing and watching and learning like sponges they absorb what they learn in the home and take it out into the streets my last one that I that I love these children need models rather than critics there's a lot of critics out there we complain about what we hear we read about this generation I included when I look at what children are doing in school it's easy to complain sometimes you forget that you have children of your own in your home that you have the opportunity to teach to train so that they can positively impact their communities. When they go to school, I've had parents during consultation where they would say, your children are such a great an exam example. They're such a good influence. And you know, you feel you have that proud parent moment. And so to all the mothers out there, you have an opportunity to raise up children that not only will impact this generation, but in the generation to come. So I'll give you a moment just, I see Mpusem, I see Tabida, I see Mrs. Mkonyana. Have an opportunity just to greet each other and to welcome each other. And then we'll pray that God will speak through his word as I go to the text. Father God, as your children greet one another from different places right now, I thank you, Father, for the mothers that are present with us on this platform, for the mothers that are represented by individuals that have loving mothers, that have mothers around them, mothers they desire to see blossom and manifest your glory. I pray, Father, for mothers in our communities in various areas right now that might be going through pain and hurt as a result of sin. Mothers that are going through pain and hurt, Father, as a result of the works of the evil one that influences different people around them. I pray in the name of Jesus, thanking you for hope that we have in Christ. That there is a solution. There is a solution. The solution is found in Jesus, who is the word. And tonight, we come to the well and we sup and drink from that well. We come to the truth of your word and we want to search those wonderful nuggets that we can get from your word. Father, we know your word is life and your word has power. We trust that, Father, mothers will be healed on this platform. Husbands will be touched by the word of God to help mothers as they create an environment that draws out greatness in each and every seed that you've given stewardship to them. Every child, oh God, every every community with mothers that might be feeling tired, exhausted, by the current issues that surround them. I thank you, Father, for your refreshing that will result in Jesus' name as we feed on the word. We don't despise the numbers. We don't despise the impact that one person, one mother that has been stirred up by the word of God can make in a community, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that as we gather together with men and women in different places, we will be stirred up Thank you for the wind of your spirit that blows and fans my mama bush, the coals that might be running cold, that Father will be stirred up and be fired up, oh God, in our respective homes. In the name of Jesus, as the song says, thank God we can call on that beautiful name of Jesus, that wonderful name of Jesus tonight. We call on the name of Jesus. We thank you for your angels that are ministering right now as we pray. A lot of mothers in our community, some of them struggle with sicknesses, physical sicknesses. 
high blood pressure, Father. My God, low blood pressure. Because the anxiety levels that are high, stresses that are caused by difficult relationship, tensions in the home. We come before you, O oh God, and we place all those petitions made by their children, made by other mothers, and they stand on behalf of mothers that have confided in them of difficult situations they find themselves. Thank you that that wonderful name of Jesus can be called upon tonight to intervene in those relationships, in those homes, in those families, in the name of Jesus. God, you answer these prayers. You hear the cry of a mother that is taking care of a child with special needs. We bring them before your throne. We can see, we might not understand that the challenges they face daily in raising up that child, but we thank you for the boldness and the courage to do so and depend and lean on you. Thank Thank you for provision supernaturally to those mothers. Thank you for the joy in raising up those children that some societies might have given up on. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for mothers that have triplets. Some of them, oh God, have so many children that they think they are not prepared for. And they feel overwhelmed by the load of raising up those children. Thank you, God, for the wisdom. Thank you for the understanding, the knowledge, the material provision for raising up those children in the name of Jesus we pray continue praying for mothers in different situations and different circumstances Father thank you for the mother that is raising up children in the village Father where they have some problem with sanitation in a village where they struggle oh God getting clean water we pray for those mothers that continue to take care of their children that labor daily just to draw fresh clean water Mothers that have raised children such a castle under such difficult conditions and raised leaders in society. Thank you for those women, the women that travel long distances, Father, to get more pani worms to come and prepare them so that they get revenue for their families. Mothers that wake up in the morning and crop, let's say, grow crop in very difficult, harsh conditions and trust you for the rains. We pray for such mothers that are able to bring income and revenue in the home. Mothers that were not celebrated, that are sometimes are never celebrated. We see them, oh God, as we pray right now and we honor such mothers. Father, thank you for the mother in the village, oh God, that have stood again the Mokema abuse that has stood against difficult conditions where he's been ostracized by a family and left alone in that homestead but stood oh god depending on you and trusting in you that one cow that one goat that was able to sustain them by providing milk right through a child's formative years up to this stage we pray and thank you for that grandmother that never gave up on those children that were dumped to them over years thank you for the mother that has treated those children like her own thank you for that grandmother thank you for the strength that you gave the grandmother Thank you for the life that you gave the grandmother. There are some grandmothers in communities that have taken care of many young children. Some of them not not from their own biological children, but the children that have been dumped in communities and that grandmother had just kept the children. And some of you know those grandmothers by name. And when they pass on, the nation or the community moans and cries deep. And they people say, when Jemu Mama Wami and they call that grandmother Make so compress that Taramande and they hold that grandmother dearly and we see the legacy of those grandmothers living on in the children right now that we see in our communities and the men and we see in our communities the husbands that we see in our communities. Baba, we thank you, Father, that the the mothers will live to enjoy the fruit of their labor through the children they've raised. If you are one of the children that was raised by some mother in the community, may they enjoy the fruit of their labor. You can visit them and go and just minister to them. And it doesn't have to be financial. You know, you can minister to a mother just by talking to them and paying attention and listening to them and giving them the time that they gave you as they natured you, as they developed you, as they grew you as they trained you they gave you their time a mother who sits down and listens to a baby speak a mother who sits down 
and listen to a child cry and begin to try and decipher the message and try and understand what the person is communicating, we too can reciprocate. Right now, we have the technology, we have the resources, we have the money, we have, we can make the time. You can make the time. I know you're a busy CEO. I know you're a busy businesswoman. I know you're a busy educator. I know you're a busy policymaker. I know you are busy, but make time for the mom. Make time for the mothers. You can visit her. If you've taken her to an old age home, if she stays too far from you, maybe you're in the urban areas, she's in the rural areas, you can drive your 4 by 4 to her. You can drive your nice car to her. You can go over there, get grocery, and you can spend an intimate time of fellowship and listen to her. She might be slow in speech. She might be hard to understand, but remember she was patient enough to hear you and to help you develop a language that she now says my mother tongue. Let's begin to say, God, give us opportunities to showcase our love, to communicate our love to the mothers in our communities as old as eight as they are. We can make time and we can be patient enough, long suffering enough to listen to them as they construct that sentence and listen to them as they tell us the dreams they had for us, the dreams they had for communities. We can take that baton. We can listen and take that legacy and have a clear understanding of it as the mother formulates it in words. I'm telling you, they've got so much wealth, so much experience, so much knowledge. If we are just patient enough to sit down and listen to them there in the rural areas, listen to them there in their home Instead, listen to them, they in their wherever they live in the suburb. We need to make time in the name of Jesus for our mothers. We need to use substance to bless them too. Yes, do it. Go to with her and go to that spa, beauty spa, and just let her be um, um, pedicured, manicured. Let her get that massage while you're with her and watching her enjoy that. Some of those things she had to forego for some of us to be where. God has taken us today. She could have afforded to get a private uh, massage. She could have afforded to go out on holidays every year, but she decided to forego it to get you educated, to get you to go to varsity, to get you to wear the clothes you wore at school. I am reminded of mothers that sacrifice their circassiana so much. Sometimes you look at a child now and see Katuenza, and after the mother played so much in her life, did so much, they forget just to appreciate and be grateful for her. This is a moment we can start by praying. As you pray, you know what God does while you are praying? God begins to give innovative ideas, creative ideas for you to sow into the lives of mothers. Not only your biological mother, that's what I'm saying, mothers around us, mothers in our communities. For those who have mothers who have gone to be with the Lord, you have an opportunity to look around and see somebody out there, a mother out there that needs your love. They can never get too much love. They need your love. We can do it to the mothers in our communities. Baba God, we just thank you so much for the wonderful mothers out there in our communities. It's easy for me to remember the roles my mothers play because of my own mother, because of what she did in my life and what she continues to do in my life. Praying mothers, mothers who pray for their children to succeed, pray for their children to rise up when they fall, who pray for their children to be developed and maximize their God-given potential. I know such mothers, mothers who believe their children will manifest the glory of God even when society has given up on such children. Mothers who visit their children in prison when society has condemned them. Father Moko Sikama children, mothers who sit with the child until the child is rehabilitated back in community and begins to add value. Mothers who see the, the diamond in the rough, so to say. Mothers who see potential before the world sees it. Mothers who constantly walk with their children for those karate lessons or go with their children for those dance lessons who believe that children can take a both 
holiday. Mothers who go with their children for sporting activity until the children is celebrated by the whole world when the gift has been natured and developed. Mothers who sit with their children when they want to give up on school because they failed a module or they failed a class but tell their child go back to school. I'm going to work in the garden and I'm going to harvest a crop. Such mothers that have that tenacity, such mothers that have that consistency, such mothers that have that resilience, such mothers that never come give up on their families, give up on their children. I'm praying for them, oh God. Society needs them. We need them in our generation. We need them in our time. Back on, who raise up the leaders that we now celebrate. Mothers, come the kebros, kizato, come the kebros, sihade. You know, I'm reminded by someone was talking about once Churchill was told give us a list of some of the Winston Churchill, give us a list of some of the people that made an impact, your teachers and they started you know, writing a list of some teachers and he went listen don't forget my mother don't, I mean he made an impact, he said a great statement for some people in some people's perspective in the UK, in England but listen he never forget he never forgot the impact his mother had in mother developed the values that he carried I pray in the mighty name of Jesus some of you right now are being celebrated in your respective industry. I know you've got mentors, you've got gurus, you've got certain people that you mention, certain authorities that you quote. Never forget Umama. Never forget your mother. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in those talk shows that people ask us, let us never be shy of the mother that raised us in the village. Let us never be shy of the mother that raised us up in the township. I think I'm called. I think Tate, she needs to be groomed. Father, we can afford to have Rebecca here, if she needs to have that dress, we cannot buy that dress in the mighty name of Jesus. If she needs how umros kababo siken doko breast ke zito rabade zipros kazata in Jesus. Now, as I was praying, I just sensed this. There are some who say yes. If my mother was this kind, my mother could have done this. I've read the Bible and I see a standard of motherhood. I've never seen a mother who matches that standard. If you, if you grow and live long enough, you realize that you can't be perfect in your role of motherhood or fatherhood. You begin to realize yourself as you begin to look. I've seen mothers that had blended families and they managed to raise up children that came in in their numbers. You know how men can be. You, you, children that come in and they seem to be twins, but they were born in different places. And, diff, you know, and the mother is introduced to this family that pops up during the course of the year and some mothers you know, persevere and they take that children under their wing as their own and they raise up that child and some of you will probably be with those children and when you begin to look at how you were raised up and you, you begin to complain and say oh mama like they should and then, let's see how you can fare with that responsibility I pray that you be compassionate have empathy. I pray that you begin to look at that mother and begin to try and put, we can do so, and put yourself in her shoes and ask yourself, you're a young woman, maybe 24, 30, you just come in and you're married, you see this man, you love him, and you say, I'm going to build a home, you have a picture of a home, and this man doesn't tell you everything, he tells you, listen, I, you're the only person I've met, the, the, and all of a sudden, during the course of the years, kids start popping up. How, how do you handle that? Or how are you handling that? There's God's way of handling it. And, and as you think of that, you begin to see that it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but I know mothers who've done that. Mothers who've worked so hard, educated, they have so much, you know, and they've budgeted for their children. They planned for their children. And all of a sudden, they've got three kids thrust upon them. And they don't give up. They still ensure that child goes to school. They ensure that child is loved. They try and make sure all these kids see that they love them. That maternal love that comes naturally from within them sometimes will come out to their own biological children. And when you see that, you get offended. There was a difference. But we need to celebrate such mother. The fact that you are old enough to be able to see this and look back Instead of going back and judging her, lift her up. And Umbo with Mama, I know it's not easy to raise up children that are not biologically your own. Especially after the pain, the hurt. For you to be able to look at me, and each time you look at me, Satan reminds you of what happened. Reminds you of infidelity. Reminds you that you were cheated on. 
Every time, and you try and deal with that at the same time and be able to take care of me. I appreciate you doing that. And I want to honor you as my mother. I forgive you for the, that you are not perfect. Neither am I. Some of you are 24, 30, 40, 50. You haven't lived long enough. After 40 years, when you look at your life and you stand before God and you say, Father, thank you that you helped me in my motherhood role. Thank you that you helped the mothers that raised me up under difficult solutions. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for enabling me through your Holy Spirit. And I pray for the mother who raised me up. Maybe she was born again. Maybe she wasn't. She doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This could be an opportunity for you to minister to her that she can know the God that you serve, the God that has given you a standard of motherhood that you are using to compare how you were raised up. Take this as an opportunity to minister to her. Father, we pray, Father, right now for this category of people. These people in different places that have grown up in blended families, that grew up in families, Father, that Borkesi Hane, Kebroski Hane, Kea, Sonde Kembre, that had mothers that were raising up children from different mothers. Children that were raised so Kembre, the Kea, children that were raised up and were comparing the love they saw given to them and they felt shortchanged. And they grew up with this pain in their heart. Some did not know they were not their biological moms. And when they heard that, they were saying, they conclude and say, no wonder. And it's difficult to forgive. I pray that we forgive. I pray for healing to take place right now as I'm praying. I pray, Father, that we take initial steps to go and cross the care, press care, the song the care, and start a conversation with them with the willingness to see healing take place. That will be a great example of the love of God, a great demonstration of the character of God. We've been forgiven, we've been loved, we've been accepted, even though we've been rebellious over the years. Thank you that we've been accepted in the household of God and God loves us all in the name of Jesus. Thank you that we will do so in our respective communities. Amen and amen. Now we go to the word, we're gonna be quick with the word. I wish I had tuned the guitar. There's a song that I wanted us to sing together. I just turn the volume down a little bit. I love you all. To all the mothers, they are truly love and appreciate you. Don't give up. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. Sometimes you feel like you're not making an impact. You're not making a change that's needed in communities, but you do. Persevere. Don't give up. Maybe you are not appreciated. Nobody probably tells you that, Mom, thank you for what you are doing, but keep going. It's hard when kids are young and all they do is cry, ask for lunch money, ask for transport, throw the, say, school fees is needed to be paid. You know, they, but later on, we do appreciate. So now, Kula, we look back. It's funny how it's quite true that children, you know, we deposit memories in the minds of our children as they grow. You know, there's one incident that happened with my mom. I, I To this day, I remember it. You know, she bought a, a drink and she was having her drink and I had my own. I drank it quick, it was hot. I finished it so quick and later on, I asked for hers. Just like that, quick, as soon as I finished, I went, mommy, you know, just crying. I was like, you drinking, play drinking. Then she, you know, literally what she did was, it was hot. You could see like she was feeling as hot as I was, but she just took a drink. I took it. Do you know to this moment, I remember one time my mom started working out of town. She was a nurse, so she would leave. Each time I would think of that moment, I started crying, feeling so bad. How could I do that? I'm such a bad guy. I could, you know, it was a memory of a demonstration of sacrificial love by my mom. But it stuck in there. I, I remember it even now, I remember it. And so never think your kids don't see your expression of love. Step kids, whether it's adopted kids, they see it. They might not look grateful, but they might just think, but as we grow, we begin to realize and begin to say, oh man, that was what, what was going on in the house. They see the abuse that you go through. They see how you sacrifice your salary. And sometimes we look and say, oh, mommy, that's another funny thing I'll tell you. 
You know, there are times where I had to be shy for my mom to visit on consultation because her hairdo was not so great. I was comparing my mom's hairstyle with the other moms that came in and had awesome hairstyles. And I said, Mama, and when my mom came in, I was a bit shy. Mama, my boy, my boy. But then as you grow, you realize that my mom loved me so much. She didn't care. She could have afforded that hairstyle. She could. She was a matron. And then she could get good salary, but she sacrificed a lot. Her other colleagues and friends looked nice with trendy hairstyles. But my mom went, I will forego this. That fees is paid. And I'll still go in the midst of all those women that look well and look groomed, but I'll stand there because I care about my son's education. Man, I remember this now. I celebrate her now. And I appreciate what she's done. And I'm praying right now as a mother. Sometimes you might not be able to afford that Brazilian. Don't worry. You can forego that as you invest in the life of your children. The children see that it's great investment when they grow up. Beauty is not that. Beauty comes from within. The Proverbs 31 woman read about her and you see where the beauty came from. From within. And God has made you beautiful. There's greatness on the inside. There's beauty in you. You need to manifest it, child of God. Don't give up, Rosie. Don't give up on your motherhood because you can't afford the Brazilian. Don't give up on motherhood because you can't afford the latest Bentley or Mercedes. You are a mother not by the things around you, but you are a mother by what God has called you to be. If you say yes to that, inside of you, you have life that you can give into a home and make a home a home. Father, I thank you for mothers. They might not be able to afford the latest hairstyles or latest uh, fashion, but they are mothers out there. Mothers that you might not put in Instagram and people celebrate. We celebrate them today. When you have a born, your eyes are watching over them. And heaven celebrates them as they minister life to their children and, and see souls come to Christ. As heaven rejoices, these are the mothers, oh God, that someday we'll hear testimonies about in the name of Jesus. They might not come on uh, center spreads of magazine or on front pages of tabloids. But Father, they are right there. Celebrated by us who see those virtues and honor them and make a can respect their Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Now read 2 Timothy. Chapter 2, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Perilous, it says perilous times and perilous men is, is the title. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. This is Paul ministering to. Timothy, who he had disciples, scholars say Timothy was about 16 when they converted into Christianity, about 16 years of old. But Timothy, this guy grew up learning the scriptures. In those days, the scriptures would have been the Old Testament. You know, he grew up in that. He was taught, thank God, by his two generations of women, the grandmother and the mother. And this Timothy comes to know God for, continues in ministry for more than 16 years. You know, under the mentorship of Paul. And Paul honors these mothers that made an impact to this young man who he's writing a letter to after he's given responsibility over a church in, in Ephesus. And he's doing a great job. Think about this is a, a, a person who is impacting married individuals, who's selecting leaders, and he's given a standard on how to select leaders. Yet, He's a young man, but not just an ordinary young man. A young man who's been mentored and coached and taught the scriptures, given values by mothers, grandmother and mothers. 
And this young man in his generation is impacting not only his generation, but this generation too. I'm reading about his life. I'm reading about his impact. And I am encouraged. And so Paul is warning things are going to get hard. Things are going to get difficult. And he's, as he warns him, he tells him this word. He says, now, here's an example of two people that resisted the truth. And he's encouraging, don't resist the truth. I continue in verse 9. But these people that are resisting truth, believing a lie, they will manifest the folly. Can't be hidden forever. And as I was reading that, I was saying, thank God for people like Timothy that learn truth and manifest truth, not folly. Manifest, manifest that truth in public platforms. I'm saying to you, mother, the child you're raising, right now it might be in that little cottage, that little village, nobody sees, nobody celebrates, nobody watches, but someday it will be manifested, manifested in a public arena, in a public space. The child will be able to walk the streets of Joburg and inspire men who will say that child was raised in a good home. The child will be able to walk a boardroom and begin to minister in that boardroom and someone will say that child was raised in a good home. That child will be able to travel different continents as he meets people. People will say that child was raised in a good home. I'm telling you, never despise the impact you make in that child's life. And they will manifest what you are putting in them. Hallelujah. We see it in Moses' life as the mother raised him up. That's what Pharaoh's daughter did. He gave the mother stewardship and says, I will pay for you as you nature this child. Did you know that this this was the actual biological mother who knew the scriptures, who knew what the people of God had gone through, how they had trusted God, and in those formative years was able to make an intelligible mark that made Moses rise up, even surrounded by opulence and wealth, not distracted by those things. He was able to remember the values that were inculcated in him and was able to stand up and became the deliverer of a nation. I thank God for such mothers that never despised the naturing of those gifts that God has given them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 10. But you have carefully followed. Now this is Paul speaking to this young man. You have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions that happened to me at Antioch. Paul is in a time of need. A lot of people have deserted him because he's in imprisoned. Some are ashamed to be associated with him. But this man who was raised by mothers was able to stand at this difficult time of Paul. Paul made an impact in Asia Minor, who made an impact in the Christian church to this day. We celebrate how he had an encounter with God, went out there and impacted the world like he did. This person that you would have despised. This person that was born in a family where his father was Greek. This woman held on to the scriptures in spite of having a gentile husband. And I'm saying this to a mother out there who is married to a man who does not honor your God. A man who does not believe in the God you serve. I want to encourage you to hold on to the scriptures because God's with you right there. God will empower you. God will enable you to parent those children. They will learn those values from you. I'm talking to the mother who's probably complaining about a husband who's given to substance abuse. Who comes home drunk. Who comes home and as you look at the home you are asking, oh God, I wish there was a prophet that you could raise in the home. You could be that prophet that God is raising. You could be that person that's a giver of life in that home. You can begin to speak life over your children, life over your husband, life over your in-laws, life over every family that visits that home. You can be able to say, God, thank you for your angels that are positioned around this home. Thank you for an altar that you have raised in this home. My children will be established by God. They will be taught of the Lord. I've seen husbands that have come to know God as a result of their encounter with the Breskia, daily encounter with a praying wife, a wife that fears the Lord, a wife of character, a wife of substance, and the husband would say, take me to the church where you go. My prayer is that you be an ambassador of Christ
Christ in that home. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you love your husband. I pray that you see in your husband in the mighty name of Jesus through the eyes of God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that God will minister to him, that God will bring healing to him, that God will open his eyes to see the glory that is being radiated by your life as you as you speak may you speak words of life in Jesus mighty name as you engage families whether it's the extended family whether it's your in-laws may the life of God radiate through you in those family gatherings may you be able to take responsibility as an ambassador and let them be able to see the radiance of God's character may they be able to stalk may they be able to look forward to you when you visit look forward to you when you come into the village and say please as they see the healing power of God flow through your gracious words in the mighty name of Jesus demonstrate to them in Pilo. There are many people that complain about in-laws, many people that complain about husbands. But I pray in Jesus' name for women that they said enough with complaining. Right now in the the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty to God to put in down strongholds. My mindset needs to be adjusted and to shift in Jesus' name. I need to have the right attitude in this marriage. I need to have the right attitude in my relationship relationship with the children. I need to have the right attitude in my relationship with everything that I come across. Hallelujah. If you believe that, say amen. I continue. Mentorship. Paul, on a person who had grown up in a family that Markebosi had a praying mother, a praying grandmother. With grandmothers that knew the scriptures and that passed on the scriptures. So he continues, verse 13. Evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We see that in our generation. And you know that if you are a mother, that creates an environment where truth is taught and truth is lived out. A child can go out there and watch the TV, hang around, have peer pressure around them, but they know truth and they see deception from truth. Yeah, was your point, mom? It's amazing. You know, we as a daddy. <laughs> the behavior of these kids is just unruly. I mean, I just, I, I can't, I don't know where do they get it from. Then you think, oh, thank God. I thought it was not working. I thought my kid was not getting it. But the, what I modeled in the home became a haven, a standard of life. Some of values gone away, inculcated in them, even though they can't name it or articulate them at that age. But it became a certain area where they knew that this is what God desired. This is what's the normal way of living. This is the culture that I should adjust to. And as they grew into that, when they went out and saw different people from different worldviews practicing different things, they thought, no, this is not, this is not it. This is not it. This is, they just came in and reported and said, no, 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 no. this is what happened. And, I, 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 and then you begin to explain it to them. But, so that they are able to articulate it. That's how it was meant to be. That's how it was meant to be in Deuteronomy as God speaks in the commandments of Israel. His commandment that would make them a nation that shows a culture of the people of God so that various nations could see their way of living and fear God and want to know God. So he told them that teach your children at the dinner tables, teach your children, teach them this law. Talk about them while you're having a meal. And mothers, I want to encourage you to do so. Have that family meal. I know these days kids just want to take their meal, run to their rooms or take their meals and just run up and watch TV off the with headphones or earphones. You are a mother that can instill the environment in the home. You can decide with a whole moon to open TV in Nazi Sada. You, you have the right to do so. Create an environment where you set boundaries. Baba was a boundaries that are set by a mother that fears God. So that when they overstep them, then you can start correcting. No, 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 no. I want you back here. Find teenagers right now. But fucking bored as a beer. 
ciders on their head and they are dancing and you look at the kid and you say this kid is nine years old I mean he's young where is the father I pray for mothers that ask very very that discipline their children in scripture mothers that set boundaries that are defined by the word of God and that don't, are not scared you're a mother first before you're a friend I pray that God will give you the boldness to do so in the name of Jesus. We continue. Yet it says, if men are rising there, but you continue in the things that you have learned and are sure of. Where did Timothy learn these things from? Let's go back in the text. I'm just closing the session now. It says, 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'll read from verse 3 to 7. I'm just closing now. It says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. Glory to God for people like Timothy, that mentor that really love the people they are mentoring, that really pray for them. We are in a generation where everybody wants to call you my spiritual son, my spiritual son, but as about cool again. We don't check on them. This guy is saying, I pray for you, I'm mindful of you, I pray for you without stopping. Paul had that heart. He wanted to see Christ formed in people. Mothers, you can have that attitude towards your children. Wanting to see Christ formed in them. That is very important and you have the responsibility to do so. And so he says, verse 5, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it is also in you. Isn't this wonderful? Thank God for the genuine faith that dwells in each and every mother that is fears God. Ma, you can't con children. Kids, kids are watching. So you can go to church and say, don't worry, I can, God can supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. They can see you testify and say, no, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The kid listens. And then when you have that bill that's come over and you're crumbling and breaking down and you're not going to your knees in prayer and they see you scampering, picking up a phone, talking to Mrs. So-and-so, next to and saying, kids watch. Then they begin to think, ah, there's faith here. The faith that my mother is demonstrating doesn't seem to be consistent. A church will come out, God is good. And then mama, but hallelujah. But they cry I've even seen you do that. Then they grow up thinking, oh, this is a game. He came like that or not. But I'm praying that we demonstrate the kind of faith that Paul speaks about and he writes it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. That I saw it in your grandmother, I saw it in your mother, and I know it's you. Authentic, true faith, not something fake. A faith that says, even though it's tough, I will stand and trust in the Lord. Even though I'm going through persecution, I know I'm not alone. God is with me right through it. Even though I'm going through a stormy season, I go to my knees in prayer. I receive help and I find mercy from God. And kids see you demonstrate it. They see you sitting in What's happening in school is tough, mommy. Things are hard. They're doing this so much. And say, listen, let's look down and pray. Ask God for wisdom. You know, come over. God has given me insight. God has given me understanding. Let's go see the headmaster. A woman, a woman that is bold. A woman that takes initiative, takes action. See a woman who goes into listen, there's a community issue, a community problem. Child, I pray and ask God for direction. Tomorrow I'm going to that community meeting. God has spoken this to me. In your conversation with your husband, in your conversation with other community members, as your emphasis are on the values that you are getting from the word of God. It, this is genuine. This is not hypocritical. This is not fake. This is not just theory. I see my father practice. I see my father or my mother practice it in their daily life. I see them go through many financial challenges. They are the cash flow challenges. And I see my mother, yeah, hey, 
I pray in her room. In the city of Jehovah Jireh, you are the one that provides all my needs. I place my bills before you. I pray for my husband right now as he works his business, as I do my business. Father, we are not trusting in that income, but we are trusting you who is the source. We thank you for our businesses that are growing. We are trusting you for my sons and my daughter's school fees. And they overhear you. Then they begin to understand that these people are not trusting in the income of Itonium 17. They are trusting in God who provides different revenue flows. They go up doing the same thing. They have a board meeting, they have a varsity. During that module, that is difficult and tough. When they cook a pants in Amadoro, they tell God, I pray to the mother, Mama, to God that I had my mother pray to. I pray to the God that I had my father pray to. He's a God that answers prayer. I remember when we were going through a tough time, I almost gave up. As I looked up to my mother, I saw my mother look up to God, and that's the God I want to know right now. As she goes in her own relationship or marriage, to say, I remember during difficult times when things were hard in the home, I heard my father, I heard my mother pray and call on you i am calling on you oh god god who answered my parents is the same god that will answer me in my situation that's the genuine faith we want to see in the name of jesus and they will not only practice it but they'll be also able to articulate it because of your consistent teaching and training teach a child teach them while they are young while well, they are young, and they will, when they grow, they will not depart thereof. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for, to each and every one of us that was able to join us today. I thank God Almighty for showing us through an example of Dr. Timothy, you know, how two ladies, and thank God now we talk about them in scripture, they were mentioned right here. That these ladies' lives had such an impact on Timothy, who too had an impact on Paul and other people around him as he pastored the church in Ephesus. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you never despise the role that you play in the communities. The various heads that you wear. Today, somebody just uh, used one, put a list of some of the things that mothers do. It was just amazing. And, and after this, my mother sent me a, a little video clip of this guy who does an interview for a job. He doesn't specify what the job is, but the job is a job for motherhood. And he begins to state the conditions and everyone's listening and thinking, yo, no, 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 no that, that, that's abuse. And then as he speaks and says, you're not gonna take get time off, you're gonna work during holidays, you're expected. This guy listens and, and all of them, at the end, he tells them that it's the job of motherhood. And they all just go, <laughs> they laugh. It made me realize what mothers do in there, sometimes not appreciated. And they're financial managers, event planners, they, they, they come as uh, doctors, they come as teachers, counselors, trainers, cooks, chefs, they, they become the coach. All those roles, they, and some of those roles, they're not, they, they don't know about what I remember one mother saying, nah, I'm kind of shoot, and I'm in a question, I had no idea what's going on, but they don't run away and give up on that role. And, and as a child, you think your mother knows everything, Sakula. Then as you grow older, someone says, you begin to think, ah, she doesn't know so much, she knows some things. Then as you grow older, you begin to say, ah, my mother knows nothing. My teenage years, ah, my mother is, ah, I was in it, ah. You know, my mother is old-fashioned. Then as you grow older, and in your 40s, you begin to realize, but my mother is a strong woman. My mother knows some things. You begin to ask, hey, let me get my mother's opinion. And as, time, and as you grow older and older, so what guys who are pretty like what I'm doing, you start thinking, yo, hey, but my mother was a strong woman. The things she did, I pray that we get the wisdom from the scriptures. Not just from experience, but from the scriptures. Because the Holy Spirit reveals the mind of God in scripture. And God is all-knowing. I mean, he's the Alpha, the Omega. He doesn't have to experience it to know it. He knows it. And so for those young people that are watching, young mothers who want wisdom, go to the scriptures, pray. And trust God to reveal truth to you, train you and develop you so you can train and develop people around you as you play your motherhood role. 
If you're up there and you're listening, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you, you've you been playing that mother, motherhood role, and you've been asking, oh God, please help me, help me know truth. You have an opportunity right now to know truth. Jesus is the truth. You have the opportunity right now to know the way. There are many ways, but he's the higher way. Yeah. The Bible says, he's the, says, um, says our thoughts and our ways are not as God's thoughts and ways. He's a higher. And thank God for the revelation of those ways in Christ Jesus here on earth when he walked and manifested so much glory. To many people, you know, the blind could see, the lame could walk, the deaf could hear. People that needed were struggling in different areas. He engaged them, spoke to them, and left them better. That same Jesus is here, and he has sent us to minister his truth and say to you right now, wherever you are, that he's reaching out his hand for you. He wants to help you as you play out your mother's your mother your, your, your mother would roll. He wants to help you as if you play out your father would roll. He wants to help you as a sibling in that family. He wants to help you as a probably a member of a blended family or an extended family. He wants to help you as a member of whatever unit God has planted you, whatever community God has planted you. God wants you to be able to know you are not doing it alone. The assignment is bigger than an individual, it's bigger than you. The problem can overwhelm you if you try and do them yourself. But he says, I want to walk alongside you. He says, I want to walk alongside you. Yes, God, who you can't see, the invisible God. You are a spirit being. You have a body. You have a soul. But I want you to know right now, as I look at you, I'm looking at the case, the case that carries you. God wants to live inside of you through his Holy Spirit. He can come inside your heart. But he's saying to you, you got a choice. You've got a choice today. He's not going to impose himself on you. This is an invitation I am making right now that you can accept him as your Lord and your Savior. He's the kind of Lord that wants the best interest for you. He's the Lord who has great plans for you. Plans not of evil. Plans that are good. Just like a mother has good plans for the children, but as mothers, sometimes we can't see Seem to get what we want done as we look we say oh my goodness this was my desire for my child but glory to God the father in heaven the desires he has for us he's sovereign and all powerful he is able to fulfill them all you got to do right now is accept him as your Lord and Savior and see a manifestation of his plans for your life which are good which are good if you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior just pray this way me say Lord Jesus let it come from your heart Lord Jesus thank you for the opportunity today to be able to say yes to the life that you have for me to be able to say yes to you coming in and living and walking with me in my daily life helping me as I play out the many hats that I have to put on in my communities. Thank you, Lord God, that I can do all things through you as you strengthen me. Thank you that you shall supply all my needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And today, Father, I thank you for a newness of life. I thank you that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. Everything becomes new. As a young person in Christ, I want to grow. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you will nurture me through your word. You will teach me your principles. I will apply them in my daily life. I will share of your goodness. I thank you for brothers and sisters that I can plug myself with. Thank you that I can share my testimonies with. I can ask questions as I grow. I thank you, Lord God, for a place where I can meet with other believers and be able to share what God is doing and ask questions in the mighty name of Jesus and be able to worship corporately with them and be able to break bread with them in Jesus name, have communion with them as I remember what you did by dying on the cross in Jesus name, paying the price for my sin. Thank you that right now I can be reconciled back to reconciled to God. I can be able to say Father, to the creator of the universe. Thank you that I can be able to do that. Thank you that I can be able to do my assignment. If any man be in Christ, the word of God says he's a new creation. The old is, 
has gone. And the Bible says we are recreated in Christ Jesus to do the good works that God prepared before the foundation of the world in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I thank you, Lord God, for the privilege and honor to be able to see your children come to know you. I thank you that heaven rejoices when one person comes into your household. Thank you that when they receive the truth, thank you for the repentance that takes place. Thank you for the change of heart that takes place. Thank you, Father, for the growth that will happen as they feed on your word daily. I pray this in Jesus' name. You can just send your name. Just inbox me with your name and your number. I'll contact you and we can go through this journey together. To the rest of you, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. I ask that the Lord will bless your relationships. I pray that you will appreciate mothers in your life straight after this. I got so many messages of pictures and mothers and I had said the condition is once I take those, those things, you do it to your mom. Send that picture, send that message to your mom. Personalized to her. Telling her how you appreciate her. Telling her how you love or any person that played that role in your life. Good night. My name is Pastor Busane. I'm passionate to inspire, to encourage, and to equip God's people to rise up and do what God created them to do. Make that contribution and leave a lasting God-honoring legacy. In doing so, people that don't know God will be encouraged and come to know God. And they will be discipled and also grow. And the cycle will keep going on and on and on. The mature one will minister. People come to know Christ, grow to full maturity, minister, and will keep growing as the church. Hallelujah. God bless you and good night.